Hey, Brian Henderson with Liberty Laundry. This is the sixth video in my series about how to use SketchUp to design a laundromat to create a 3D model of it. Today's lesson is a little bit more advanced. I'm actually using a pre-made floor plan, uh, to just a 2D drawing, to create a 3D model to see what it looks like and actually take some measurements and see uh, how much space in between equipment and tables we have. So let's dive right in. This is the floor plan I'm going to be using. Looks like it's 2,400 square feet, which I take that to mean uh, 60 feet by 40 feet. I've cropped the image so that uh, it should be exactly those outer dimensions that we need. And here in SketchUp, we're going to use our tape measure tool. We're going to measure out 60 feet by 40 feet. And I'm just clicking once, moving my mouse, typing in 40 feet, enter. Okay, now we're going to bring that image in using the import tool. We're going to need the file type JPEG, because it's a JPEG image, and I believe I have it saved to my desktop. There it is. All right, it's going to have you click where you want the image to start, and then click again where you want it to end, which is going to be the intersection of our guiding lines right there. Okay, so this is drawn 60 feet by 40 feet. It should be pretty close to accurate size. I'm going to start populating this with some equipment. I'm going to hit Import, choose SketchUp file type, go into the folder where I have those saved, and let's bring in, for example, an 80-pound washer. Looks like the backs are all aligned, so let's bring it over, lined up with this line right here. I'm also going to pull in some more equipment, like a 60-pounder. Let's do that. These are models that I've previously made from a previous project. So if you don't know how I'm doing that, watch some of my previous videos. I'll tell you how to do it step by step. It's really pretty straightforward. And what's great is you can reuse those components for later projects. All right, I'm going to pause now and bring in the rest of that equipment. Okay, sorry for the hard jump there, but now we have all the equipment in place. And yeah, it looks like it's probably not Speed Queen equipment that this person is using, at least not the Quantum Gold. Um, it worked pretty close for the washers, so I guess maybe they're using Daxters. I don't know, uh, but it, it was pretty close fit. But once I got over to the dryers, uh, I kind of ran out of room <laughs> for my models. But uh, this is all I have drawn up at the moment is Speed Queen equipment, so let's roll with it. Um, so, hey, we can definitively tell that we would not have enough room for this many pieces of uh, equipment if they went with Speed Queen. So, hey, there's that uh, question answered already. Okay, so one thing I don't have are the tables that this person is using. How do we do that? Well, something I haven't really shown is how to draw just kind of freeform uh, some equipment from scratch. So we can make some reasonable guesses off of this. They probably drew these tables to about the size that they're looking at. We know that the overall floor plan is the right size, 60 feet by 40 feet. So we can kind of just use this rectangle tool here and just draw. And it looks like at those dimensions in the bottom right corner that this is about four feet by two feet. So let's just draw it four feet by two feet. Pretty reasonable guess. And then we can use the push-pull tool to lift this up to a height of, I don't know, say three feet. I don't know if that's standard table height or not. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, I'm inside of my washer there. <laughs> okay, so now we need, that's not a very good looking table, it's just a big block. So let's use the tape measure tool to make some guidelines for us. We're just gonna go over to an edge here, click it once, drag over, and let's type in two inches. Same for the other side, go two inches, and then the tabletop, yeah, let's make it two inches steep, shall we? Okay, now we can use our line tool, or a rectangle tool, but let's use the line tool, going up, over, and on down. It just snaps right along those guidelines. And now, this is one of the most fun things about using SketchUp. Use the push-pull tool, and push that face until it intersects with the other edge, and it just disappears. All right, let's make the legs. Let's use the same method. On in, and Google, I mean, I'm sorry, SketchUp is already predicting what, how I want it to be. 
and then right along the guidelines. That's the power of SketchUp, really, is all of the, um, it's very intuitive. It guesses what you're trying to do. It snaps along things. And once you learn how to use those guidelines, then it makes it pretty easy. All right, you saw what I just did there. It didn't uh, clear it away like it did that first time because there was this extra line on the other end when I tried pushing that edge on through. So let me do it again so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, tape measure, and yeah, hey, it's just snapping right to where we want it to go. I'm not even have to type anything in now. Pretty handy. Let's use the rectangle tool here. Just click on one corner, drag on down, and there we go. Push pull tool, push it on through. It didn't delete that, but what I can do is just simply select it and then delete it. And sure enough, there's that line, which is why it wasn't going through. Why? I don't know, but that's okay. And we've got all these guidelines everywhere, so let's get rid of those. I'm going to use the Erase tool. The other option would be using the Select tool and selecting each one, and it turns blue when you can select it. I don't know if you can see that, but the Erase tool is a little bit easier. You just click and drag across it, and that deletes it. Uh, if you ever screw something up and you need to go back a step, there's always the Undo option or Control-Z on your keyboard. I use that a lot. Learn how to use it, and it'll be your friend. Okay, so that's just one table. I need six of them. I could draw them all by hand, or I could simply select it. Actually, let's select this whole thing, right-click it, make it into a group. Now I can select the whole object at a time instead of just one surface or one line. I can also choose the Move tool to move it around, and because it's a group, I could also rotate it if I wanted to. Pretty neat. Okay, let's line this up exactly in this corner. Right, and scoot that back just a touch. Okay. Now, uh, I could always right-click it, copy, and paste. Actually, no, there's no copy option there. I would have to select it, choose Edit, and then Copy, and then choose Edit, choose Paste. Or you can see these keyboard shortcuts are Control-C, Control-V, or even faster, you can just hit the Control button just once, See that plus that appeared next to my cursor? I can click anywhere on this model I have highlighted and then just drag over the new one. I'm going to put it over here and then even more advanced, I can make an array. I just clicked and dragged that on over and now if I type in divide by two, it creates a linear array, evenly distributed objects between where I started, where I ended, and then however many items you want in between there. Pretty fancy. I'm going to right-click this, make it a group, choose my Move option, hit Control, and then drag that on out. Pretty speedy. Okay. I don't know why these tables are a different size. Maybe there's a specialty type they're going to use. For the point of this, um, for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to copy and paste this on over. Looks like it's about the same length just a little bit longer. That's okay. Say I wanted to measure in between two spaces. How wide are they leaving in between these tables? Well, we can use our tape measure tool, click on one point, just drag on over to the other point, and you can see that they left about five feet in between those. Four feet, 11 inches, 11 and 5 sixteenths inches by my measurement. <laughs> but, uh, but who's counting anyway? Okay, so that's how to draw an object like that. How about the walls? I'm sure you really want to know about that. A few ways we can do it, but really it's going to be a combination of using the tape measure tool to create some guiding lines and then using your line tool to draw there. So really, if you just want to freeform it, you can just start with the line tool, click, drag it along, and you see how it snaps along the axis there, the red axis, you can enforce that by holding down shift while you're drawing and now it'll always stay along there as I'm holding down shift. Okay, and click and click and click, 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 click. <laughs> when I enclosed that space it then filled it in to tell you that is an enclosed shape. And when I'm basically going to do this for all of the walls through here, 
And once I've done that, I'm going to use my push pull tool to lift it up to create my walls. In this case, let's make it eight feet. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to pause again and we'll see how it looks with some walls. Okay, here's where it starts to get really fun. I've drawn all my walls and be sure to use the tape measure tool to create guiding lines for you quite a bit while you do that. It, just make life easier on yourself, but here we go. Okay, drawn all my walls and we choose our surface and bring it up to say eight feet. Now it's really starting to look like what we want it to be. A few last little things for me to rise up. Eight feet. Eight feet. And because this isn't my store, I didn't design this, there are a few things I'm not quite sure what they are, but um, you get the general idea. This is pretty good as an exercise here. Uh, I'm assuming that this dash line means that there's probably going to be some sort of little header wall in between this. So what if we just simply use our tape measure to measure down, oh, I don't know, how about a foot? Draw a line right there. And now we can push this right across that span right there. And delete those lines to make it look like it's it has always been there. All right. I'm going to guess that this is probably some kind of a uh, counter looking into the office for people to drop off their laundry. So let's do the same thing, create kind of a header wall up above here. Let's measure down a foot. Draw a little line. Push this across. Erase that, and then create some kind of uh, little counter space here. So let's use our rectangle tool. Push this on up to height of, I don't know, I'm just guessing 36 inches again. And if you want to get real crazy, we can add some shelves on the inside of here <laughs> using our uh, offset tool. Let's go in a couple inches and then push this on in. Not all the way, but maybe just most of the way like that. I won't draw the shelves, but you get the general idea. Okay, so very quickly we can see how this is going to start looking. And um, you can really give an idea of the space that you're going to be dealing with. Now my building doesn't have any entrances, so I would probably have to um, measure out this doorway and then just draw a little frame and then push it on out. So just like I've shown you before, we could just very easily, um, for example, bring this on over here, and I'm going to guess that the doorway is about three feet wide. And then how high are doors? I don't know. I would go measure. <laughs> So let's make it at least seven feet. Just guessing for now because I'm doing this kind of real quick on the fly. Choose my rectangle tool and then just use my guides and then use my push pull tool right there. And now I have an entrance. Yay! All right. Um, for other things that you don't care to draw, either they're too complex or you just think somebody else's model looks nicer than yours, you can always import stuff. So I'm going to import a toilet. There we go. If only it was that easy to install in real life. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, hit control, click it, drag it over, rotate it around. You get the idea. Okay, hope that was helpful to you. Um, you know, leave a comment or send me a message or uh, post on the coinlaundry.org forums about uh, this if you have any other questions. Um, maybe in the next one I'll show how I would draw the bulkhead, uh, the cabinetry in between the machines, because obviously you're not going to leave your drainage trough just open to everyone. At least I hope not. I've seen a few laundromats that do that, but 
Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.